Good evening, everyone. Rocco and I are here to um, go over the pair programming and some code tracing. And we want to just show you what the different roles look like when we have two people working together to um, look at some code. And so Rocco and I are going to demonstrate the roles of the navigator and the driver. I'm going to be the navigator. I'll be giving Rocco um, the direction on what I want to type in in terms of the code and with the code tracing. And Rocco's going to be giving me feedback as he's typing it in um, to kind of help me as I'm thinking through this um, code to see if I can figure out where the problem is. So we're going to start in activity 1.4, crush the bug, and we're going to start with downloading the code for dragonflies. So Rocco, are you ready? I am ready. So I'm already in activity 1.4, crush the bug, and I see under resources I have all these .hex files. So you would like me to download the dragonflies? Yes. Okay, dragonflies is downloaded. Okay, and let's go into the make code environment and import that file. Okay, so I have an import. Mm -hmm. So from here, I'm going to import the file and find the file. And it is now imported into make code. Perfect. So the first thing I think we should do is take a look and see what the um, what the objective of this code is. Um, I can see it looks like it just ran as soon as we opened it, um, but let's see what it, the code is supposed to do. So if you click on the, um, the little bubble with the lines in it inside the on start button, and we can read that and see what this code is supposed to be doing. Okay, so it's telling me that when the program starts, the LED grid will count down from five to one and then show Happy New Year across the screen at the end. Okay, can we take a look at the code and just run it one time and see what's happening? Yep. Well, it doesn't look like to me it's running um, the code properly because it doesn't say Happy New Year at the end. I see the same thing. Okay, so let's run a code tracing chart. Okay, I have a code tracing chart that has my code outcome and correct. It's got an objective, bugs, and then a buggy program and a correct program. Okay, let's start with copying that buggy program and pasting it into that space there at the bottom. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and right click and then download a screenshot and I could insert that screenshot. So this is my buggy program. Right, and we want it there because um, if we start manipulating it, we might forget, uh, we might move things around and we won't remember what the original code looked like. So this will help us. Um, the next thing I'd like to do is take that objective out of that, um, copy that from the comments in that on start block. And I want to paste that into the objective. Okay, so that comment becomes my objective so that we know what the program is going to do. Right. Okay. Okay, so now let's go to the top of our code tracing chart and let's start with that on start block. So if we can take that on start block and let's copy that into that um, that space there. Okay, so you only want that first block. Only want the first block, right. Okay. So, is that correct? Yes. Okay. Okay, and then um, the outcome is supposed to be that the code starts, so, um, or starts the program. All and right. it does that, so we, we've seen it start that, so we know that that is what's gonna happen. So let's take a look at the next block. So I have show number five, and the comment says it shows the number five. Okay. Um, when we ran the code, I saw number five. Did you see that? You want to yeah. run it really quick? There it is. 
So it looks like I see all the numbers, including the number zero. Right. Okay. Okay. So let's go ahead and copy that show number five block and let's paste it there. And um, the outcome should be that the number five shows on the screen or on the LED grid. Okay, so we show the number five mm -hmm. and we and did that, see it. Yeah, so that should be a yes. Okay. All right, uh, let's go to the next block. So that's the pause for 100 milliseconds. Yeah, let's look at the comments. Oh, oh so it says it's going to pause for a thousand milliseconds or one second. Okay, wow. so then that doesn't look like that's correct then. Right, right, that's a problem. Let's go ahead and paste that into our chart, um, that block, and, and then, um, so the outcome should be that we pause for one second or 1,000 milliseconds. So 1,000 milliseconds or one second. Yeah. And okay. that's not correct. Rocco, can we go back and look at the code? Because it looks like there's lots of pauses there. Okay. And they all have that same time. So it looks like they all say that they should pause for one second, which makes sense because it sounds because it's a countdown. Right. So we should be counting down for one second. So can we change all of them now since we know? Yeah, I think we should. Okay, so then I can just go ahead and copy these. Right. And that'll probably save us some time in the end. Yeah. Okay, so we know that all of our pauses are incorrect. So we have quite right. a few bugs in the program. Yeah, it looks like it.